All right. So please explain First Corinthians eight eleven. And through thy knowledge shall the weak not uh, the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. All right. We'll start off with Brother Jordan Tyler. Actually, if somebody else wants to go first, so I can dive into that real quick because I'm not familiar right off the top of my head. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, well, let me see. Uh, okay, I have to dive into it too. I didn't even listen to you when you read the question. Renee, are you ready to, to um, talk about that? Yes, I can do that. Uh, thank you for putting that link up. If that was to you, Jordan. Uh, Jordan or Ben or somebody or Luke put the link for my video with the four faces in a detail. And it's a fascinating one. It, it's good. So uh, you can watch that. It was done in 2018. I, as a matter of fact, I'm not sure I mentioned all four Gospels in it, though. I might have just mentioned the four faces and what they represented in Jesus. But if not, there, I have two of them. All right. So the weaker brother Paris, what is the number on that verse, you guys? Because I know what it's talking about. It's 811. What, what? I'm sorry, First Corinthians. Eight First eight. Corinthians 8. Hold on. Sorry, I like to pull it up so they can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's the thing. You know, I still got people saying, yeah, but you, it, you, it's wrong to eat from an idol and stuff. Paul is basically saying, if you go to a pagan's house, right, and you want to preach them the gospel, well, it was common to invite people over to sit down and eat a meal with them. Travelers, uh, you would often have strangers stay in your home. It was commonplace, right? So what he's saying here is if a pagan it, or you buy your meat at one of the markets, don't ask where the meat came from. Because you're going to feel condemned if they offered it to their idol. And it doesn't matter because with prayer, you've blessed the food in the name of Jesus. And those idols have no power at all. So don't worry about it. You can eat it. But if you do have a weak conscience about it and you're scared you're breaking some law, just, just don't ask. And you won't know, right? You won't know. But let's say everybody does know it was uh, uh, blessed to a household idol or something, their little altar to their household God. Let's say they know that. And you're with a guy that's weak in the faith, meaning they, they are still legalistic. They don't understand their freedom and their liberty and the full victory in Christ. So now they're scared they're doing something bad, right? Well, what he's saying is don't, don't eat things that will offend a brother or cause him uh, grief, right? Something that makes him feel condemned, don't do it because it will offend him. So don't let your liberty uh, uh, hurt fellowship, all right? So it's, it's, let me get the verse here. So the thing is, and through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. Now the word perish there does not mean uh, to die in this case, it means destroy. It's like, are you going to destroy your brother? Are you going to tear him up for, for whom Jesus died? So let's back it up a little bit. Now, how be it, there is not in every man that knowledge. For some with conscience of the idol unto this hour, eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. You see, they're thinking, oh, I'm condemned of God, right? Because I ate something offered to an idol. That's what he's saying. Their conscience is weak because they don't understand the full victory in Jesus and that everything is God's, even if you offer to an idol. That's how powerful Jesus is. It says it's sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So, you know, in Acts, when they're like, stay away from meat offered to idols and things strangled to fornication and you should do well, right? They were still putting some legalistic stuff on it. And here Paul is saying it does not matter. If the, even if they do offer it to an idol and you know, praying over your food in the name of Jesus 
knowing God made everything, that the earth is his and the fullness thereof. There is no condemnation. It's just meat. It's physical. It perishes. It's nothing, right? But meat commendeth us not to God. For neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. So it's not what you eat that makes you right or unright with God. It just doesn't matter because Jesus has the victory. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours, this freedom, become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Okay, that's why I'm against this Hebrew roots thing, because it's turning people into legalists that's unnecessary because it, it just means they don't understand nor respect the liberty we have in Christ. But if what I eat would offend them, it hurts their conscience, I won't eat it. If I'm with someone that says I can't eat shrimp and I can't eat bacon, I'm not going to order a BLT and a side of catfish. All right. I am going to stay away from it or shrimp rather. Uh, I'm going to stay away from it because I know it'll bother him. He'll think I'm being disrespectful to God and what's right, right? So I'm not gonna force my freedom onto him. For if any man see thee, which has knowledge, sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him, which is weak, be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? So if you see, uh, if if there's a man that has knowledge, sit down to eat at a table, right? And he knows that what's being served has been offered to an idol, either in the temple or in the household altar. They usually put some offering out. They've blessed it in the name of their God or offered some of it to it, right? He sees that going on. And because he's a guest, he feels compelled to eat it. Because it's worse to offend people. You don't want to offend someone when you are a guest in their house and you're trying to give them the good news of Jesus. So now, and through thy knowledge, shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. But when you sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. I hope you guys are understanding what Paul is saying there. Yes, you are free. An idol is nothing, even if it is offered. So what? You could pray over it and you don't even have to, you don't have to feel condemned at all because it's nothing. The earth is the Lord's. But if a man knows it's been offered and you give, you let him know that, and he sits down to meat. When they say he sits, sits down to meat, it means to eat food. Meat can be anything, anything you're eating. So when, when he sees that, he knows he's stuck there. He's got to eat. Now he's going to feel, eat it, right? He's going to eat it because it's a polite thing to do. And now he's condemned. So it's better that you abstain from the meal altogether rather than sit down and him feel compelled to eat something he knows is offered. Because his conscience is weak. Better just not eat at all. That's what Paul's saying. For his sake. All right. Thank you, sister. Good job. Uh, some of you might not be aware of this, but we have a Wednesday night Bible study. And uh, what we've done is uh, worked our way through the Pauline epistles. And we have done a full teaching on 1 Corinthians. Uh, so you can find a, a, a more thorough explanation of, of this chapter there but i think that the the context here pretty much is self-explanatory if we read it. i'm going to read verse 9 through 13 and just it should make sense just from that context alone but take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to them that are weak for if any man see thee which has knowledge uh by the way, the knowledge is the knowledge that it doesn't mean anything. You can eat the meat or not eat the meat. It's really, just, it's just, uh, it's okay to eat it or not eat it. That's the knowledge. Which has knowledge, sit at meat in the idol's temple. Shall not be, not the conscience of him which is weak. That's the person that doesn't have this knowledge and is, you know, not mature. Be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols. 
and through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. It doesn't mean perish in that, uh, you know, they, they are destroyed, you know, second death, that kind of thing. They don't go to hell. Or that, that's not the consequence. But their conscience now gets to them because they don't realize it's okay. And then they go ahead and follow your follow you, seeing you do it, and then they do it, and they feel bad. Um, but when ye sin, so against the brethren, and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. So Paul's conclusion is that, is that in his case, he's, he's determined that, well, he'll just not eat the meat. Uh, or, or not the meat, the sacrificed idols. He knows it doesn't matter. He can eat it or not eat it. But if he, if it's going to affect somebody else who doesn't understand that, and then their conscience bothers them, and they're suffering because of guilt over it, then he'd rather not risk that happening. So he'll just abstain himself. It's pretty uh, obvious when you read it in context. Uh, okay, Brother uh, Jordan? Yeah, so it's definitely... Uh scripture that I would have to look more into. I guess it's something I've never really been confronted with in the terms that I've had to contemplate. But, you know, the one thing I feel that we definitely need to keep in mind is everything we do is to be salt and light, bring glory to God. So with that said, you know, if there is anything that's going to look a little peculiar for a Christian, for instance, I was asked the other day by someone, well, is it a sin for Christians to swear? Um, and, you know, and the Bible tells us we're to guard our tongue and all that, but that doesn't mean that there aren't Christians who swear. I know that if I'm stubbing my toe, there's not <laughs> very kind words coming out of my mouth. But the thing that I also know is that if I claim to be a Christian, I go out and just swear, people are going to be like, oh, you're a Christian? That It just comes with the territory. So we're to conduct ourselves in a way that will always show glory to God. So it doesn't necessarily pertain to this particular section, but that's the thought that I would add on. 